you know, thank you for um, taking the time out of you know of mum life to uh, to talk about the cellar. Um, yeah. I, I caught it ahead of the um, ahead of the Brightfest slash South by Southwest sort of premiere. I thought it was a you know sort of a, a great a great a great continuation of um, Brendan's short The Ten Steps. Yes. Um, so I mean, were, were you familiar with that work before? With that yes, short I, I watched. On? Yeah, I had watched. Although the short is different than the feature because it yeah. had to be you know obviously a a longer uh, um, script you know I still wanted to see sort of you know the inception and the idea where it started so um Brennan's short was really interesting and especially uh, I think the the great scene of you know counting and me on the phone with you know the, the girl who plays our, my daughter Abby Fitz who plays Ellie in the film our, our phone conversation of her going down the steps really was an homage to to the short and um so yeah it was nice to see the short and then to continue on and read the script and go oh wow this really has now Brendan's made this translate into into a feature and it's really it, it, compelling I mean you became famous um I think for most people playing a, a a troublesome teenager on 24 you know daughter of, of Jack and Terry Bauer now the roles have been twisted and you know you're in the role of, of parent you know what's it like having the tables turned yeah, it really came full circle for me when we were on this film because I, you know, not just with Abby, but um, who plays Ellie, but, you know, seeing myself in her and how I was her age when I played uh, Kim Bauer and the sort of daughter in distress like she was playing. So we obviously we had a lot of great conversations and um, but yeah, but then to also see, you know, Dylan, who plays Stephen, my son, in the film at 11 years old and going, this is when I started. So it was a full three, you know, full circle moment for me with with him and with her um, on, you know, from for both different time frames in my life as an actor. So, yeah, it was sort of surreal that here I was finding myself in the position of parent and uh, and not as child actor anymore, but kind of glad, too, because, you know there's been an evolution for myself and, and uh, it's amazing to think that I was once in their shoes at that age. And, and here I am still sort of kicking away at it all. I mean, Terry, she went above and beyond to, uh, you know, to keep Kim safe. And I guess that's a, a trait that you could argue that, that Kira shares in, in the cellar. You know, what do you think it is about parental, but more specifically, you know, the, the maternal instinct that, that bond is so strong and so powerful that, you know, these characters will do anything for their children. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think you'd like, you'd try to move a car if you had to, you know what I mean? It was, it, it's, it's that, that it, that's that thing that makes the film, I think, it, it, it gives it that realism, that, you know, believability that this mother would go to the ends of the earth to save her child. And with that motivation, it opens the door to, you know, this woman being able to sort of tackle the scariest things imaginable. Because um, a lot of times in horror film, you kind of cringe at the idea of why would this character go do that? Or why would this character try to, you know, take on this evil? Um, but when you're dealing with a mother losing a child, uh, it makes complete sense. So it was a great way to draw on um, the motivation for her to kind of go do do the things that she ends up doing and sort of getting herself into some really scary situations that you were like, oh, I believe this completely. Um, and yeah, so it was, uh, it, it really made a lot of sense to me. And I thought, what a great, brilliant way to uh, structure this horror film. I think and most of it was was filmed on location in around the house. You know, how much does that help you as an actor actually being there as opposed to oh. on a on a soundstage? Yeah, when you're when you're actually at a real location, I mean, it becomes another character. You know, it's it's it just becomes so great to play off of. You know, in the way that maybe even just having like another co-star would be. You mm. know, instead of carrying the film by yourself, you've got other actors to to bounce off of to play off of. Um, and when you're at a real location, I mean, you bounce off that, you play off of that, it's inevitable. So, oh my gosh, it's such a great, it was such a great experience to be able to really be in it and really be in this really scary location in this house. And even, um, you know, throughout the film, other locations around Ireland uh, in the catacombs in these dark tunnels where it was, you know, murky and cold and dungeony. I mean, this was really what we were experiencing. So you don't have to act that 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 
that's atmosphere that's there. Um, so then I just have to do the rest. So it was just, yeah, a great, a great thing to be able to just really immerse myself into these real locations. I guess the cellar sort of ticks off, uh, you know, two of the sort of the horror tropes, you know, the haunted house and, and the scary basement, you know, why do you think that audiences are so terrified of, of these spaces and why we are so keen to keep revisiting them in film? Yeah, we really do revisit them, but, you know, and there's always ways to change up and how to play it. But, you know, I think the core of it is that I think home is supposed to be the place where you feel most safe. So when a horror film turns that concept on its head and it becomes the scariest place, there's something very unnerving about that. Um, so, yeah, I think that 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 sort of juxtaposition of the safest place being the scariest place is, is what I think everyone sort of gets unnerved about and, 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 and really takes it to a scary place. And I guess that becomes even more true in light of the fact that, you know, we've all spent the bulk of the last couple of years in um, inside our houses, you know, suddenly true. thinking, what if my safe space was, that was where I was locked down, you know, that would, you know, how, how would I cope with, with that scenario it just makes it yeah. that much more terrifying. No, you're right. I never thought of that, but yeah, absolutely. I think too. Yeah. We, we can relate to it so much more because we've been stuck in our home, <laughs> in our homes for so long. So yeah, we, and we definitely appreciate getting out. So sometimes for some people, I guess maybe it was the most terrifying place to be. Oh my gosh. I mean, having started um, in Are You Afraid of the Dark and then, you know, appearing in, in Captivity and House of Wax, you know, you're no stranger to the horror genre. What is it about, about horror that sort of like makes you so intrigued to, to keep coming back to do projects? It really lets the character go to some wild places. I mean, horror films, you can, not only are you dealing with real characters, real story ideas, you know, especially in our film, The Cellar, where, you know, my relationship with my teenage daughter is obviously at odds because she's going through her rebellious teenage years. There was fun play on that. But then also too, in the same to on the same token, in the same film, I get to play a character who's running around crazy trying to rescue her daughter and really gets you to these like sort of vulnerable, physical, scary, terrified places. And you really get to like play these different emotions and and through the course of this film and then to find those levels and where those moments hit and how to hit them. I mean, it, it, it's always a real challenge. So to me, I really enjoy the challenge of that. And to try to make that as believable as possible is always a real fun feat. A lot of, a lot of people say that working in comedy and horror are quite similar in a way. Oh. I guess because the timing would obviously having worked within, within both arenas, would you, would you agree with that? That they, they're sort of, in a hmm. weird way, tap into similar skills. I mean, I guess, community. yeah, I guess. I mean, I guess you could draw parallel lines to both genres in a way because I think with physical comedy, yeah, comes like that having to sort of be completely uninhibited and let yourself go. Um, you can't sort of overthink a scare and you can't overthink a joke, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, you could really sort of break it down. I mean, th I guess that'd be a great conversation for uh, uh, that Jerry Seinfeld show, um, Comedians <laughs> get in Cars Getting Coffee. I mean, the parallel between the horror and, and the comedy of it all. Maybe, maybe. I mean, I'm certainly not thinking about comedy when I'm on a set doing a horror film, that's for sure. <laughs> um um, but yeah, I guess you could you could draw some similarities. I, one of the one of your other films that I, I really love is is the Girl Next Door. Um, oh. You know, I think I'm i we're, we're similar ages, so I sort of grew up with with all of those films that you were making. But I feel like there hasn't really been a film like the Girl Next Door since then. And so I think I guess as a society we've almost left the teen film behind. You know, do you hope that they might come back? one day because I mean for me they were like really important in my formative years and it's kind of sad that it's they're not there anymore yeah I I would I would hope that there there's more to come especially for um the next generation of of you know young adults sort of coming up and you know for you know for a while there was like when we were doing the girl next door I remember we drew, drew on a lot of films like um you know, 16 Candles and, uh, you know, Risky Business and Weird Science. And so, yeah, I would hope that, you know, there's another sort of girl next door for the next generation. Um, I'm just glad that I got to be a part of one from like for you and I, uh, 
and that Lou Greenfield, you know, decided to make the film in the way that he did. Because at that time when we were doing The Girl Next Door, um, you got to remember that, like, at that moment in film, there was, like, a lot of, like, the American Pie sort of vibes that were going on, um, which were a little bit more risque, I would imagine. And even though our film was about a porn star, believe it or not, it was, there was something very innocent about it. And, um, yeah, and the soundtrack was pretty, pretty great. So, yeah, I, I, I would really, I would, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine there not being more films sort of that in that way, but, um, but yeah, it just, uh, it was, it was a special film for sure. And I mean, everybody has gone on to do stuff. I mean, even Olivia Wilde had a very small oh. sort of part as an extra, you know, so like all of you have gone on, you know, Paul Dano's obviously, you know, battling the Batman now. So, you know, you've all, oh, yeah. you know, these careers. So it was obviously, you know, a great training ground for everybody. Yeah, it really was a special time. And, um, and yeah, you could just feel that it was a special movie. It really, we had such a great time making it and it really felt sort of, yeah, unique and interesting. And um, I think we felt like we were really going against the grain of what was kind of going on in, in sort of young Hollywood at the time. And we knew it was special. So um, it, 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 it's just heartwarming and, and amazing to know too, that it still has a, has legs and, and people are discovering it and, and people are still so fond of the film. So it's a, it's a, it, it, that's sort of what you want when you're making movies. You want sort of these timeless classics. And I think we definitely made one, which, you know, we're really all proud of. Definitely. And I guess my final question is, you know, now that the, the seller's out, I think you've got two or three projects in various stages of development. Is there anything that you can share about those? Yeah, I think the next one will be Bandit, which is really a Canadian story, which is, you know, close to my heart because I'm Canadian, obviously. So um, to be able to sort of tell this bank robbery heist style film that is based on a true story, a Canadian true story is really exciting for me. So Josh Jamel and I did that uh, last June and um, I'm really excited for people to see that. Well, I wish you the best of luck with that and the best of luck with the seller. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go and uh, part the husband and uh, the three-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> They're like dying for you to get back. <laughs> They're like, what, where he, are you? It's Baby Shark. She was watching Baby Shark. So he's oh, probably yes. the walls, uh, you know, wanting to. Baby uh, Shark. We do a lot of Paw Patrol. We've got uh, Peppa Pig. We, we, we do it all. Louie. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot. I know. We're on the same. Yeah. We get the same thing going. We have the same Netflix queue. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Boy, yes. I will. Uh, I will uh, wish you um, the best of luck with the films and uh, have a have a great rest of the day. Yes. You too. Thanks, Kat. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it.